Well, today's course has a number of different aspects of LCMS that we're going to talk about. We'll start by looking at uh, what LCMS and LCMS MS is all about, a little bit about how the quadrupoles work, uh, some instrumentation information, uh, more about how ions are formed, and then finally uh, a few odds and ends about how the uh, total analytical process goes together. So let's get started. First, let's take a look at some of the uh, overview or general aspects of the mass spectrometer. Uh, the mass spec as an LC detector has been around since, oh, the mid-1980s to early 1990s. Uh, in the early days, uh, we can think of the LCMS as, as I've shown in this kind of cartoon here, where the, the mass spec was really the important thing. And to operate one, you really needed to be highly skilled in, a, in mass spectroscopy. Uh, perhaps you had a PhD or, or a advanced degree of some kind in, in mass spectroscopy. Uh, you knew how to repair it, to operate it, and so forth. The LC system was just an introduction uh, for the sample at the beginning. And really, we didn't rely on it too much. And if you look at some of the early work, the LC runs were only a minute or so long in contrast to four or five minutes for a typical LCMS run today. Uh, but today we see that the LC is a much more important part of the system. We've discovered some things like ion suppression uh, which uh, make us realize that uh, the LC is an important part to separate the compounds of interest from things that might interfere with it as well as the simplification of the mass spectrometer itself. And so the mass spec is becoming more like a traditional LC detector, like the UV or fluorescence, although it isn't quite there yet. But for the most part, the operation of these is very straightforward and simple.